uh yeah excited to uh kind of kick things off um i guess i'll do a mini intro um i've been at with just tech for three years now um in the manage managing the support team um so kind of the day-to-day uh in regards to the help desk tickets coming in and and things like that um and just keeping track of of inventory management and other 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 critical uh systems um and trying to make make sure things flow smoothly for for our kind of end end clients um miguel go ahead and uh, do a little intro on your side sure my name is uh, miguel castillo and i work as a excuse me a tech support specialist at just tech for you know, maybe seven years now um i basically uh enjoy the the idea of investigating especially when they're solving uh, problem solving uh, and the various network environments of our clients. Um, outside of that, just a quick thing, I enjoy hiking, listening to music, reading, and proud dad of 19 year old daughter. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Blair Sordetto. I am the current operations manager at New York Legal Assistance Group. So I handle everything, all of the administration, operations, facilities, and technology for our office. Um, we have a staff of over 400 people and a few offsite offices as well. Uh, my background's actually in music. So I come from like house management, from performance venues and event production as well. Right. Um... So a little bit on the agenda side, um, try, try, uh, I mean, not to re read the slide, but kind of just in the direction that we're, we're kind of going through uh, just a little explanation on what is inventory management, uh, uh, kind of from our perspective and some of the knowledge that we've, um, kind of discovered along our ways, uh, why we think it's important, um, how how we kind of use it um, and potential tools to consider. Um, and we'll kind of talk a lot about, I mean, as simple as an Excel worksheet to actual applications and and um, services that you can pay for to help help keep things and, and tracking items as well. And and kind of ideas as to when, when we think it's important um, to use it as well. Uh, so I guess to kick things off, we do have a poll. Um, so I guess, uh, Shelly, if you want to run that. So the poll questions um, here. So just to kind of get a base of uh, seeing where, where people might be, um, if, if you don't have any kind of inventory practices currently at the moment, uh, just focusing major mostly on laptops, desktops, or servers. Um, if you have kind of laptop, desktop, server, hardware, but then kind of other hardware as well. And then if you are kind of tracking everything uh, in regards to hardware, software, and even files and data and things like that. And Tim, those polls don't seem to be functioning. So if we could just have people put in the chat what they're using. Okay. No problem. Okay. Uh, do we want to give a little time for that or jump to the next one as people type in? I think people can continue putting in what are you doing for inventory management currently? And um, we'll continue on. Great. Okay. Yeah, so go I ahead, think Miguel. I'll come over here. Yeah. So we'll start with question, why is inventory management important? And we'll go over the following four reasons as to why. Cost saving, onboarding, offboarding, audit, reporting to funders, and security. And at this time, I'll talk about cost saving. So we all know that within the nonprofit world, finding ways to save is crucial on many levels. For this reason, implementing and maintaining an inventory system is so important. As you build it, 
you'll notice that you'll be able to use it as a tool for planning ahead. Um, so to be clear, once you know what you have, you will then be able to analyze what items you need to be replaced due to age. And then from there, you can decipher what budget you need for the upcoming fiscal year to replace with your. So by having this figure in mind, even if it's just an estimated ballpark, uh, your team can then work on grant funding and fundraising figures. Another fact is that by planning, you will find yourself in a position to buy devices, excuse me, in bulk versus purchasing items on an as-needed basis. And tech resellers do provide hefty discounts when one makes such a purchase. In return, this will help save the organization a great deal. So another reason why inventory management is important um, is in regards to onboarding and offboarding staff. Um, so it's really helpful to keep track of knowing what inventory you have on hand or in stock for your new hires. So we're talking about laptops, phones, headsets, that type of thing. Knowing who has what devices and where they are. Does the staff have it in hand? Does it live in an offsite office? Where, where are the devices living? And finally, knowing what needs to be returned when someone leaves the organization, it's all very helpful to keep track of. So when you have an accurate inventory, you're able to better plan for unique situations or accommodations. So some examples would be like standing desks for medical accommodations, or maybe there's a special software that someone needs to have downloaded on their computer, you're able to keep track of all of that. Uh, so in regards to some of the auditing and reporting um, for funders, we have definitely ran into some requests where the funder may reach back out and say, I would like a report as to kind of where the funds have, um, have were spent uh, in regards to a grant or, or, or things like that. Um, so being able to kind of easily access a a inventory um, system, and again, whether it's Excel and actual tracking. Sorry, I have a a fly flying around me. Um, whether it is just as simple as an Excel sheet or something in SharePoint. I think I saw uh, a couple people mentioning the uh, actual platforms as well. Um, kind of really whatever works for your organization. Being able to easily pull a report as to when you purchased a certain group of computers and being able to pull that and send it back to the funder and saying, these are the devices we purchased. These are where they're being used. Um, we have found that to be a lot easier when requested, being able to just easily export that out. Um, and kind of elaborating a little bit on what Miguel was mentioning, it, it has, um, it does help for when the equipment, when you're looking to get new equipment, you can kind of pull reports on when hardware is going to be kind of reaching its age of end, end of life, um, being able to justify some of the costs for new equipment uh, and things like that. Um, and and again, kind of what Blair was touching on, like if, if there are an uptick in headphones needed or docking stations and other things like in laptop chargers, being able to know um, different general patterns uh, that you can kind of keep tabs and tracks on. Uh, and, and that could just be even adding a little note or um, to a curtain, certain inventory device and stuff like that. Um, and I guess diving right into the uh, security aspect. Uh, I mean, security is obviously a big thing um, these days. And, and it really just ranges from not only just tracking the hardware, but just tracking like really everything in the org. You could um, trying to make sure that you're understanding where your data is being used and accessed from and stuff like that. Um, so could probably talk on security at a broader scheme, but just kind of keeping it a little more focused on the inventory management. Um, I mean, we've been just keeping a, a very track of of devices that gone missing or or potentially stolen uh which hopefully doesn't happen a whole lot um so just knowing 
that those devices um, had certain measures put in place and having the tracking system being, okay, we can, that one we can mark as, as it, as being stolen. We know that things like BitLocker and drive encryption and stuff like that were, were in place. Um, and just being able to track that and, and have reassurances is, is always, um, is always good to, good to do overall. Um, and just in, in the sense of uh, tracking things, and a lot of times you might have to work with like your your IT vendor, whether it's in house or out of house. But um, if there, if you were in, ran into a scenario where you were part of like an attack vector of some kind, just knowing where things are, like you have certain printers and switches and and servers uh, at different branch offices and stuff like that. Um, I think not worrying about what's where just having it all into a system has really helped us a lot and and just being able to really track everything um and you can go as far as knowing the who has access to what uh so you can kind of track the people and okay these these group of people have access to these devices and stuff like that so you can get really granular or you can really just keep it to the basics again it's it's kind of the an org preference um but we have found in the security sense that um, being able to really get down to the details and and track as much as we can has helped us a lot uh, overall. Um, and even as far as like applications from a security standpoint, just getting out of the hardware entirely and and just touching on the application side, like if you have critical um, business type applications and and again, tracking who has access to what, what kind of admin level permissions they might have, um, as well as even just things like updates and patches that making sure you're staying on top of those things. Um, and just, and that can all be part of uh, an inventory tracking overall, um, uh, just kind of pairing the hardware to kind of what Blair mentioned about staff onboarding and onboarding, as well as even just application and stuff like that. It can all be kind of lumped under uh, kind of an inventory type tracking aspect overall. Right. So we're here for the next poll question. Has an auditor comment, commented on your inventory management? Uh, you can uh, chat us your responses. It's either yes, no, or what's an auditor? On to the next slide. Great. So when to use inventory management? We'll touch base on these topics, budgeting, planning, and procurement, staff onboarding, reassignment, and offboarding, and moving equipment and setting up new equipment. So as Miguel mentioned earlier, having an accurate inventory also assists for budgeting, for any type of purchasing for new equipment and updates. And especially if you're able to keep track of purchasing dates, warranty dates, stuff like that. Um, regarding planning, any consistency and predictability you can add to the onboarding and offboarding process is really helpful for all the teams involved. Knowing what assets you have on hand in advance of start and end dates helps to better meet these deadlines because your communication and preparation have the space to happen in a predictable amount of time. So for example, in my situation, all the communication is liaised between HR, IT, and administration. So I communicate to each team what needs to be done and when, and also reach out to the staff member that's affected and make sure to communicate their return or pickup of technology and other items. Um, the ideal scenarios would be to have all the equipment and software prepared and ready by the time the new hire starts or versely when someone leaves that the technology can be easily returned and or shut off immediately after their term is ended.
Unmuted. Uh, so touching a little bit more on the staff kind of onboarding and offboarding, um, the we kind of used, we implemented kind of Microsoft Forms uh, as a way um, that, that have been working pretty well. Um, and you can kind of link the form to a flow and the flow can trigger certain aspects of notifying certain people. You can have the flow actually trigger an email to get approval before the flow continues to to proceed through the, the, the next steps um, and notify other people. So there's different aspects that you can really do in regards to um, kind of uh, the forms and, and flows. And there's, there's lots of other tools. Um, so don't don't always I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, I think there's different options across the board um, and even on if for a co for a company that is using like Google uh, uh, workspace, uh, there's definitely options under that umbrella as well. Um, but we have found it very helpful being able to kind of track um, just simple things like the staff and what they need in regards to like docking stations again, um, if they'll need certain licenses in 365 um, for I don't know, Visio or project and little things that you can kind of adjust the form as you go um, as simple check boxes to, to make sure that to try to avoid missing little things and making sure that the account, once it's set up, um, it, you don't have to go back and, and try to tweak things overall. Um, so that has helped us a lot over. So I'll talk now about reassigning and offboarding equipment, as well as moving and setting up new equipment. Uh, so once a staff person leaves the organization, the devices are returned and then eventually reassigned to the next employee. Um, but I did want to paint a scenario where, for example, uh, new equipment has been purchased. And so there is this older computer, older laptop that a super might have had, and we give them a new one. And as a result, that formers then reassign to, let's say, an intern. Um, and so that is one scenario where reassigning takes place. Another way to look at uh, this is um, if now they have new equipment and that older equipment, you see that it really does not work. Um, it doesn't work properly, then we know that at that point, it's best to recycle. If it's still good enough, but within your age uh, limit of your devices, it's already surpassed that, but it's still functioning, of course, uh, you can always decide to donate. Um, and so the main thing here that I wanna point out is no matter which scenario is uh, happening within your organization, all of this has to be recorded in your inventory. Uh, and it's ideal uh, because even let's say the items are being donated or recycled and you're removing them from the inventory. Um, I can mention for me as an example with uh, one system that I use, um, I can dispose of the items that are no longer on my inventory list, but they haven't been permanently um, uh, removed. So if for auditing reasons, if I need that information, I can always, I have a backup for it. Um, now, when it comes to offboarding old equipment, um, for mine, I can say that once you have purchased the new equipment as a result of planning ahead and budgeting, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, the next step would then be, you know, contacting your recycling company to pick up the items. Um, they can uh, also shred your hard drives for those older computers, because as we know, there's a lot of confidential information. Um, and you can always get a certificate as a result, confirming the destruction. And I'll just repeat, with having an inventory system, even if it's just removing from your company, um, you still want to have that as a record um, in case you get audited. Um, with moving equipment, um, 
as Tim mentioned earlier, having a form uh, will help to know what equipment is needed. And from my experience, it's best practice to have them created as early as possible with an effective date um, that uh, allows the IT department to do the whole process of whether if it's gonna be physically moving something, um, but most importantly, updating the inventory. Uh, so if there are a number of moves, something that I've, we've done uh, is try to scheduling them on the same date. If there's too many for one day, then scheduling back to back days. Um, the idea is to create a smooth process, um, make it as efficient as possible. So with moving and setting up new equipment, um, the tool, the inventory management tool will be extremely useful um, because you'll be able to check beforehand what equipment you have in that new location, whether if it's available or even when it will be available. Um, and then if you see that you don't have certain equipment, you know what uh, needs to be brought in to that location. Um, it also allows you to analyze uh, all of your devices. Um, and if you happen to have acid tags, uh, which you can um, use with an asset management system that have the, an identifying number, it just make it easier to track. Um, you'll be able to, as I was mentioning earlier, find what that location has. You'll be able to find that within minutes at your desk using that type of system. In the case where new equipment is being set up and you need to plan accordingly to create names for each device and or asset tag to identify them. These are new equipment, like the computers, as an example. Um, you will then be able to add them onto the inventory as well. Uh, the idea is you're always updating the inventory because the more up-to-date it is, the easier it is for you to plan ahead, uh, to strategize. Um, if there's new um, equipment you need for, uh, let's say, the next fiscal year. Um, and uh, the information that you take down for your inventory can, you know, it, it all depends on you, but usually the main is uh, make and model serial number. Um, and so I'll just end that with an inventory management system, you can usually link a handheld with it as well. And that would make the process of recording uh, all these transactions, these moves and setting up new equipment a lot easier. And you can then upload onto the system through the handheld. So we have our next poll question. How does your organization do inventory management? Do you use commercial asset tracking software? So an example of that may be Asset Cloud. Do you use general software used for tracking? So something like Excel or SharePoint, SharePoint lists. Do you use paper or sticky notes? I don't know or we do not keep inventory. And I know that question is a little similar to the one before. Um, I think the one before was actually more asking um, like what, what type of items you actually do track. So if you already did clarify like Excel or, or an asset tracking system, by all means, maybe share some of the things that you do focus on tracking um, in regards to hardware or, or, or other items like that. Okay, so um, how to do inventory management um, will go over two ways, a systems-based approach and a manual approach. Here um, on the screen, you see a screenshot of an example of an inventory management system called Asset Cloud. Um, and this happens to be the main uh, view or main tab called View Assets. 
using such a system allows to enter in as many different asset types uh, you consider are important to track within the organization. And then within that, you can give each device an asset tag to identify each device, um, and then uh, include the site, if it's if you have different branches, the location, who's the current assigned person, that sort of thing. The date of purchase, which is always important, and date to replace. If you have a five-year limit and you can put that, that that will show that will help you be able to track your devices better. Um, what is also helpful is that you can continue to enter a new asset as you continue to purchase new items. And like I said earlier, again, I just want to repeat it. Um, if you have items that are being recycled, uh, you're able to dispose of them uh, from uh, any of the management systems. Uh, in this case, um, I happen to use as an uh, asset cloud. Uh, so now that I've spoken about asset cloud, in no way, I just want to make sure I'm not recommending it to you all. It's, it's a system, like I said, I've used and just wanted to share with you some examples. Um, I'll do a quick mention of other uh, examples of inventory software in case you would like to do a search on them. Some examples are Fishbowl Inventory, um, Zero uh, with an X, X E R O, Webgility, W E B as a boy, Gility, G I L I T Y, Asset Panda, and Soho Inventory to be okay. At the same time, I'll let you know that there does exist a more advanced software where geolocation is included. And this is built into your device's BIOS so that you can track the asset even if it's reformulated. So in other words, if someone steals it or misplaces it and someone else takes it and they reformat it, we'll still be able to track it. Um, and such examples of that type of software are absolute cart graph, that's C A R T E, and then graph, G R A P H, go codes, G O C O D E S, and clear path GPS. Um, however, these type of systems will be more expensive, but worth looking into. Lastly, if your organization realizes purchasing inventory management software is outside of your budget, there is the manual approach to which Blair explained to. Great, thanks, Miguel. Um, so I saw in the chat, a lot of folks do use Excel, so this may be very familiar to you. Um, I use a combination of SharePoint lists and Excel, which you can see a couple different screen grabs of on the slide. So when I started at NILAG almost three years ago, I was very organized, organized myself with lists and sticky notes and journals, and very quickly realized that with our organization's expansion and the sheer amount of people I had to simultaneously onboard, offboard, and move um, every week, sometimes upwards of 20 people every week. Um, in addition to my other responsibilities uh, was just simply too much to keep track of in my little head. Um, because a lot of this information is not all available at one time, you're just like, as the information comes in, piecemealing it. Um, and so there's just constant updating through each stage. Um, now I've switched over and, and I use a combination of Microsoft SharePoint lists and Excel as my checklists for these processes. Um, and they're much more helpful because now you can easily see a visualization of the progress of each process. So the onboarding checklist for admin staff was virtually non-existent. Um, basically, there would just be an email announcement from HR. They would add the nameplate and the mailbox, and that was pretty much it. Um, there was really like no way to double check what happened, when it was completed, or you know. Since then, we've had many uh, other types of assets to keep track of. You know, we've mentioned docking stations, laptops, 
phones, um, merchandise, there's just so much more to keep track of. Um, so having these checklists has now dr uh, dramatically increased consistency in setting up equipment or obtaining equipment on loan, which ultimately not only saves money in the long run, but more importantly, helps to improve the workload efficiency of staff because they know what's happening, when it's happening, when to expect these changes. And most importantly, all of this information is in one centralized location. What's great about using SharePoint lists and Excel is that you can also sort and filter depending on what your needs are at the time, which I was not easily able to do with sticky notes. Um, and you can also easily share these lists and collaborate with others based on your needs. Next slide, please. Um, so as you may have been able to tell by the past two slides, I'm a very uh, color coordinated person. I'm a very visual person. And so um, when I created my SharePoint lists, I uh, reflect that. Um, so this way, if I wanna look at the list on a macro scale, as you can kind of see in the smaller uh, screenshot on the right, I can easily see if something's about to fall through the cracks and I can follow up on it or I can just go through each profile for each person and update each action item. Um, as I mentioned, since I'm the intermediary between HR, IT, and administration, I make sure that all of the operations related items are accounted for. So in our case, that includes like mailbox assignment locations, ID badges, you know, have they been added to various internal lists? We have like seniority lists, seating lists, notary lists. You know, have they been invited to onboarding, orientations, tours? You know, are they getting a laptop? What brand are they getting? Do they need any additional equipment set up or software downloaded, other licenses? And finally, have they been added to that Excel spreadsheet that you saw earlier that the administrative staff access? So this information, as I previously mentioned before, is uh, not always available all at one time. And so if you're like me and you have multiple groups of onboarding, multiple people every week, having this checklist that you can easily update with every single step is super helpful and make sure that nothing falls through the cracks and everything has been communicated to whom it needs to. Next slide, please. So for offboarding, very similar process. The only difference is the list of action items. Um, so on my end, again, for operations relations thing, this includes like removing the name tags from the desks, removing their mailbox assignments, making sure their IDs are deactivated. Are they removed from all of those lists we talked about earlier? Um, making sure, did we get return of IT equipment on loan? So again, laptops, headsets, printers, thumb drives, all of that. Um, and finally, making sure they're removed from any internal systems. So for example, at our organization, we have a conference room reservation system. And so I just make sure that everyone's accounts are deleted once they've exited the organization. And again, have we added all of this information to that centralized location that the administrative staff have access to in their checklist that they sign off on? So again, having everything color coded is super helpful for me. Um, but what's great is that you can customize SharePoint lists however you want the information to be presented to you. So they have pull down lists, bubbles, long answers, text, um, whatever you need that's suitable for your organizational style preference. And one thing that I'll just add um, to, to Blair's, I mean, I've, a lot of our focus and and I think really anything that saves time these days is is automation. Um, so I think that as you kind of build out these different checklists and are are seeing different things in regard just as an example of like the offboarding and finding ways to automate things to say, okay, I have to go into this particular portal to check if the account was deleted. How can I maybe, automated so it's it's once they it's deleted from one source it gets purged from all sources so it can really kind of flag things like that that has um and finding ways to really automate the offboarding as much as possible which is which is key and something that we really look for right and this next section will speak on 
how to do inventory management. I just want to make sure you can hear me okay. Yep, you're good. Okay, good. Uh, so to start with, um, it's of the most importance to create and keep an inventory of the organization's equipment as detailed as possible. If you ask why it's very simple, if you don't know what you have, how can you begin to identify areas of concern and where replacements are needed? With that said, I'm going to speak on CIS security control one. But before I go any further, um, I just wanted to clarify what CIS is defined as, and it's it's an organization called the Center for Internet Security. And this organization created uh, this security control one to serve as a standard guideline to best track the organization's progress. So the purpose of maintaining an organization as secure as possible. Um, and so within this guideline emphasizes and um, actively managing, and by manage, I mean inventory, track, and correct, all enterprise assets connected to the infrastructure, physically, virtually, remotely, and those within cloud environments to actively know the totality of your assets that need to be monitored and protected within the enterprise. I also want to clarify that enterprise assets also include end user devices, including portable and mobile, and of course, network devices and servers. The reason why uh, CIS security control is critical is because an organization can't defend what they don't know what they have. Having a managed control of your assets will assist to secure and monitor securely monitor what you have, plus will help make your incident response to data breach and cyber attacks more efficient. Plus creating such an inventory based on these guidelines will help support your organization in identifying unauthorized and unmanaged assets to remove or remediate. Lastly, it will also allow to detect any missing assets. And as we all know any missing assets can put your organization at risk. So in regards to change management, um, as I mentioned when I started, there really wasn't much of an inventory management in place other than computers and laptops. Um, but now that we have so much more inventory and staff numbers to keep track of um, requires the use of a management system, or in my case, a combined use of multiple management systems. Um, without it, steps would be missed, and overall the process was very inconsistent and slow. Um, I did develop a new checklist system for myself, as well as the administrative staff I mentioned earlier. Um, for change management, this also meant that I had to retrain the entire administrative staff on how to standardize how hires, moving, and exits all occurred. It is now a step-by-step -step process, inclusive of a signed off checklist. We also do have regular check-ins to make sure that the process fits with their daily workload. Um, everything is being completed in a timely manner, and most importantly, that they know what to expect and when, and we can make adjustments as necessary. The most important aspect of all of this is that all of the pertinent information is in one centralized location for easy access and reference, um, as opposed to little emails here and there that you're trying to dig out. Thank you, Claire. And another um, way to do inventory management uh, is listed here is barcoding by using the barcode reader. Um, I know that I've used it, some clients, uh, especially on Excel spreadsheets. Um, I've been able to scan barcodes on devices with a basic reader. Um, and while it doesn't record all the information you need, but at least um, at that, I would recall with this specific place, at least the fact that it recorded the serial numbers made it um, faster for me to complete. Um, now, today you can still purchase a simple barcode reader like that that simply connects to your machine via USB. But um, like I said, the downside 
get, it's not going to give you all the info. Um, you can today get barcode readers that are have Bluetooth capabilities. And along with reading barcodes, they can also um, read QR codes as well. Um, and I don't know, uh, Tim, would you be able to go back to slide nine for a second to show an example of the QR code? Yeah. And so there's an example of the QR code to the square image. Um, and what's you know, great about the QR card that it can hold a lot more information. Now, with most inventory management systems, you're also able to purchase handheld, like I mentioned earlier, software. And I know for me, when I use it, I'm able to scan the asset tag of the device, uh, which is in a barcode form. Uh, and then from there, I can look up the information I may need on the spot. If I'm setting up new equipment and want to enter in the details, uh, especially if I'm unpacking at a different location from my office, um, I can go ahead. Yes, uh, at the beginning, you'll have to put in an asset number uh, and some other information but it will record the serial number. And then what's great about it is that within seconds, you can upload that onto your system. And any other information they need, you can add at your desk. Um, when I've used the handheld, um, it's been very helpful. Um, the area where I feel that it'd be, it would be more perfecting is scanning the QR codes. I found myself at times uh, having issues uh, scanning them. Not always uh, because of the handheld. Uh, I've, I've had issues, issues with manufacturers. Um, the QR code uh, was kind of not printed that clearly, and so it would make it harder to scan. And then at other times, um, I had to configure the handheld. There are ways to configure them to be able to read certain codes. Um, and at times it's worked and other times it hasn't. And I think Miguel, you have worked with the, like the smartphone app as well as like an alternative to, uh, correct the handheld. That's true. Yeah. That, that using the smartphone app has also helped me in situations where I didn't have the handheld with me or at times when I was going home and I realized something and I wanted to enter that info, I could do that with the phone app. Okay. Um... So some a little uh, I guess lessons from the the field, um, just kind of touching on some some different things. And I know uh, a good amount of people mentioned in the chat about the Excel files. Um, and one of the examples that I um, that I've worked on recently was a, a client that had multiple offices, um, and we had an Excel sheet where different options within the sheet um each office had access to the sheet and they would update their own kind of location within the sheet and different different tabs within excel and the the naming conventions were all different because we're all we're all humans and we all have our own style so we all pick our, our our different things so one of the things that we did change that i felt helped a lot was making drop downs in the excel sheet rather than relying on someone to I don't know spell a word right or or pick decommissioned versus retired or new versus old and and whatever um so making the drop downs where it could apply um and just setting it to pick one of these five options as this computer was retired and and that's it it, it avoid definitely avoided uh, and has helped with just human error and and things like that. Um, so, so the drop downs and naming conventions overall, 
um, helped a lot with being able to track um, across these different locations um, uh, for this particular client. Uh, and with the different um, equipment at, at kind of lo the different local offices and stuff, um, uh, again, just kind of standardizing it so that um, if certain, making sure that some fields are marked as like required even so so we know that we're getting the correct information like a serial number that's usually pretty critical um when it comes to seeking out support via the uh the vendor and stuff like that um so just making sure that there's some fields that are highlighted as kind of required as well as drop downs for other fields to uh to make sure that there's less uh um mixing of words and, and errors overall. Um, so something that's been really helpful for us in using this inventory management system is uh, you can learn about general trends and what's happening to your assets. Uh, for example, in our organization, uh, there were laptop chargers that were being lost uh, pretty uh, frequently. frequently. And so uh, we were able to pull reports and you could see the general trends and you could kind of narrow it down like, oh, okay, it's, you know, in our case, it was like one specific unit that was losing them more than the others. So I was able to use that data and information and educate the users. And now it's all been resolved. And that's something that I wouldn't have been able to easily track before. I can talk about another example uh, with DVD drives. Uh, we were uh, checking out DVD drives, external DVD drives uh, pretty frequently. And we, again, noticed that there was a general trend, that it was happening more often, that there was clearly a high demand for it. So we were able to take that information and that data and used it to um, purchase a bunch of these external drives that we then put into all of the conference rooms which just raises the customer service level for all of the staff um, and makes everyone much happier. Okay. And so from my end, what I've noticed, I'm hearing some, sorry. I'm not sure I'm getting feedback now. Um, from my end, uh, I've noticed that using an inventory, uh, whether it's a manual approach or systems-based approach, um, like the scenario that Blair mentioned with laptop chargers missing, um, if you do not have an idea of what you have, uh, easily the scenario that could come next would be person, let's say, returning laptop because they're last day is today and they tell you oh uh, don't have you know I lost my laptop charger and you happen to know that you'll be using that laptop for someone else coming in next week and you're about to reassign it um, but you don't have a charger so then you're going to be forced uh, to purchase another charger at, as an as needed basis as I was mentioning earlier. Now, if you are able to have some type of inventory, you know what you have, you can then plan ahead. Uh, along with that bulk purchase, you can buy a few extra in case of an emergency um, like that. And that will definitely help uh, cut costs for your organization in the long run. Um, another example that I, I didn't want to use. Sorry. Yeah. Back. Um, is that um, there were a uh, time when uh, we were getting a lot of requests uh, for uh, loaning portable DVD drives. Uh, this is uh, at Blair's organization. Um, and so I happened to include these. It wasn't, there weren't a lot of them, uh, but I did include them in the asset system. And then what I started to do as a practice was checking them in and checking them out, whatever people uh, requested. Uh, when my then 
discover that Tim and Blair were talking about is I did a report in the ACID uh, system, in ACID cloud, and was able to see that, yes, the, the uh, requests were increasing. And so at that point, we decided uh, to make this uh, process more smooth. Let's just order these uh, DVD players, put them in the uh, focus rooms where employees can then reserve the space and have access to them, as opposed to every person coming and knocking at the office, knocking on the door while we're working with other people at the same time. Um, so that said, I mean, I think having some form of inventory system will greatly benefit the organization. Um, it will keep, it will be definitely, it is a key to keeping your budget healthy and as well as keeping your office secure, the devices that you have. Um, not, not to scare anyone, but it, it's, it's good for everyone to be aware, you know, that um, external attackers are always uh, looking or devices that are not protected. It's an easy way into organizations. And they infiltrate through those devices. And by the time you notice, they've been there already for some time. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got any, uh... Dive into some Q and A. Feel free to to chat if you have any uh any questions.